Hey everyone, this is Ricky Bell with Victolic VDC. I'm a senior application developer for Victolic Tools for Revit. In this video, I want to go over the Victolic Dock. The Victolic Dock is a dockable window that's generated from the Victolic ribbon that can be placed anywhere on your Revit screen and even on different monitors as you work in Revit. Within the Victolic Dock are a number of different tools, and I'm going to go over them each individually with just a brief overview so you can get the idea of what they're intended to be used for. Now if you're in Revit and you have Victolic Tools for Revit installed and you don't see the Victolic Dock open, here's where you can find it. Up in the ribbon bar you'll see the Victolic Tools tab and over on the left hand side under the Create Assembly menu will be the button for Victolic Dock. Now this will open a dockable window. This window can be dragged out of its place and placed anywhere on the screen a lot of times we'll see customers who put it on top of the properties window or maybe it shares with the project browser. For me, I'm going to put it off to the right hand side for now. The dock is intended to be placed vertically on your screen, although there are some extra features if you were to drag it a little bit wider. Well, the first tool that we'll see in the Victolic dock is the assembly manager. This is a tool that will help you manage your assemblies, as it says. Uh, but it also helps you run some automated processes on them to create spool drawings and to manage some parameter data. Well, before I can illustrate many of these features, I'll have to make some sheets out of these assemblies. The settings for this can be found in the settings button up here, and I go into greater detail in the assembly manager video, so definitely check out that video. But these instructions here control what shows up on the sheet and where they show up on the sheet. Okay, I'll select just the first four, Choose a template and click Go. Now sheets are being created, views are being placed on those sheets, tags, dimensions, continuation tags, QR codes, barcodes, it's all being controlled by our settings. And when you generate more than one spool sheet, it returns you to your previous view. So over on the right hand side you'll see these icons. They help you determine the status of spools, and they also serve as navigation buttons to go right to that sheet. Going top to bottom with the assembly manager, there's a couple items here that can help you better organize your sheets and organize data on the sheets. Uh, grouping by level, area, zone, and sequence, especially when you use the sequence manager, uh, can help you group your assemblies. This filter text box right here can be typed into and in real time you can filter down to exactly the assemblies you're looking for. The move to command will change functionality depending on how you're grouped at the top. So at the moment move to will show me my available levels and I'll be able to change the levels of these items within my project. Revisions will allow me to add a revision to a sheet in real time. You see it come up here. It also allows me to remove revisions from sheets. The Locate button helps you locate your items within your model, and the Actions menu gives you even more functionality, whether it's adding to a print set, selecting the associated sheets so you can populate certain parameters, creating packages, which we'll talk about in the Package Manager, exporting STL files and PCF files, as well as pipe cutting files. Well, moving on to the next item in the Victolic dock. Uh, you may notice that we've changed our navigation menu. It previously was tabs at the bottom, and now we have this menu at the top that can give you all of the options for the Victolic dock. So next we'll go to the component bank. Now the component bank is a selection-based tool where you can save selections from your Revit model to a data file. You can move that data file to different versions of Revit and then recall those items. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll go back to my 3D view. If I were to zoom into this area here, Let's say I make this selection. These, uh, these drops are something I do all the time, so I want to automate this process. I'll take the mechanical equipment out of it and the assemblies out of it for now. I can hit Save Selection in the Component Bank. And I'll give this a name called, uh, called Drops1 and maybe put it under a category called Drops. Now there's some other information here as far as the primary size. It tells you 8 inch. Secondary size, it just found the uh, smallest diameter pipe that it could in your selection and it came up as 3 quarters of an inch. This is meant for you to be able to search by the size to look for compatible component banks later on in your project. So I'll click OK here and it'll save my selection. After saving the component bank, it creates a little icon for it that allow you to recall it in any other project. I'll stay within the same project 
So when I recall this bank, I happen to be in a 3D view, there will be an extra click for this because it wants to know what level I'm placing the items at. So I'll click on recall. And now it's prompting me for something flat. I'll give it this uh, pad back here. And now that it knows I'm on level one, I can place the bank wherever I want. I'll place it over here. Now, if you were to try to recall this in a plan view or any other two-dimensional view, it already knows the level that you're on, and this is a single-click operation. And after a few seconds, the piping system is then redrawn in your model. So this can be a huge time saver for common configurations. Uh, you can also export these, so click on it once and hit Export Bank. This will come out as a zip file that you can then share with other people in your organization. One of the biggest opportunities you have with this tool is to down convert a model in Revit, which currently is not possible. So for example, you could take a model drawn in Revit 2021 and backtrack it to Revit 2018. The next item in Victolic Tools for Revit, Victolic Doc, is the Package Manager. Package Manager again can be found in this menu up here and click on Package Manager. So packages are larger selections of components that may or may not contain assemblies. This is our answer to a push for modularization in skids, as well as a way to automatically generate our fabrication maps. So if you recall, over in the assembly manager, I have 10 assemblies here. It's very easy to take these 10 assemblies, go to actions, and click on create package. It prompts you then for a name, let's call it package one. And again, a category. Let's say that this one is a system. Packages can also be created from the Modify toolbar or the Victolic Tools toolbar under Create Assembly. Just click on Create Package. This allows you to add items to your package that are not part of assemblies. But now that this package is created, I'll flip back over to the Package Manager, and we see Package 1 is listed there. So the settings for packages are nearly identical to the settings for assemblies. So once you get familiar with how to set up your sheet, how you like it in the assembly manager, configuring the package manager is exactly the same. As are the controls for generating sheets. So I have package one selected. I'll go down to my package templates and select this one and just click go. Once complete, the sheet will be created as is the views, tagging, and a bill of material. In this situation, my bill of material is just a list of the assemblies. But if you take a look at the tagging, you'll see that the assemblies themselves have been tagged. Our package manager further integrates our connection with GTP Stratus, where packages that you create within Victolic Tools for Revit can then propagate up to GTP Stratus and vice versa. And last but not least in the Victolic doc is a tool called Project Mentor. So Project Mentor is a way that you can set up custom rules that you can run across your entire model to look for inconsistencies, parameters that aren't filled out, misuse of product, geometric clashes, and really anything you can think of. Uh, the rule set is completely customizable, as is the way you run the rules. So let's go back to our 3D view for a second. If I take a look at the settings for Project Mentor, it can be a little overwhelming, but each one of these lines here represents a rule that you can create and you can modify. By default, we'll have a Victolic Standard Rules template, but you're welcome to create your own. So digging into one of these rules, we have a, a missing sequence rule here that's pretty easy to understand. You can see that it says missing sequence. You can say that I'm looking at the family category of pipes, and I'm looking for the rule item that says the Vic sequence equals nothing. So you repeat that rule for every other category that you want to check. And when you want to run that rule, all you really have to do is have it checked in your template. So I'll click OK here. Now if I hit Check Model, it's going to find that pretty much everything in my model is missing a sequence. But just to show you how fast it goes, I found 572 items. In this case, I wouldn't fix them individually. I would probably apply the sequence to all of them at the same time. Let's take a look at some other rules. Under settings, I'm going to uncheck the sequence one, and I'm going to check the one that looks for duplicate couplings. And because our couplings for family type systems are technically flanges, there is the opportunity to have two couplings on top of each other. So we have a rule in there to check for that. Uh, even at the bottom, I can be looking for maybe clashes or missing couplings. But for now, I'll just run the duplicate couplings rule. 
click OK, check my model, and it immediately finds two elements in my model that are duplicates. So I click on View, it will zoom me into that item. Now the second item is the other coupling. So as soon as we fix one of them, both of these will be fixed. The right thing to do in this situation is to change the second coupling to a family we call the non-connector, which will graphically fix it and will also guarantee your pipe lengths are correct. Now I can run the rule again on the entire model or I can run it on my selection. So let's say I select just these items here, hit check model, not a problem. We'll go back to the settings. Now we have a number of different rules here and you can check them on and off just like this. Uh, you can also filter down for rules. And let's say you wanted to have a rule that will look at assembly views and tell you if you're missing a mark tag. Let's take a look at this rule. This rule has a specific function called is not tagged with an attribute of mark. Okay, I'm looking at pipes, pipe fittings, I'll expand this out, pipe accessories, and fabrication pipe. So I'll make sure this one's checked. And just for fun, we're going to set up this scenario. If you remember back here, this is one of my spool sheets. If I come into here, and I'm just going to delete one of these tags. Now maybe the situation this represents is something changed in your model, something changed in your assemblies, that you added something to an assembly, and you forgot to put a tag on it. If I go back to my model and just hit Check Model, now it picks up the fact that I'm missing a tag on one of my assembly sheets. And when I hit view, it actually shows me that view that's missing the tag. There's a little bit more info. If you click on more info here, you can see what is missing the tag and the issue. And a little cheater here that can tell you that it's a member of CHWR-01. I'll click on close. And, and maybe I'll just duplicate one of the tags that's here already. And we'll put a tag back on this. Check my model again, and it comes up clean. So the Project Mentor, again, is a tool where you can set up custom rules that allows you to scan and check your entire model for inconsistencies and errors that you may want to address. So that was just the Victaulic doc. It's the Assembly Manager, Component Bank, Package Manager, and Project Mentor. All very advanced tools that can help you model, check your model, and generate project deliverables. Thanks so much for watching.